Good morning. I'm just so delighted, thrilled to see you here. I know there are quite a few people still stuck on the highway. Um, we, we timed this perfectly on the most amazing day of the year because it's our first rain, which of course is very positive, but it makes traveling a little bit harder. So thank you very much for coming a bit earlier out of your bed uh, to make it here in time. We of course could do a little rain dance as well, right? <laughs> So I hope you had the opportunity before we started to meet the people at your table. Networking is a really important part of this event, so please do get acquainted with the people uh, around you. And I hope that throughout the day, maybe you'll switch tables around a little bit so you get to meet more people. Uh, I am Margot Gerson. I'm the director of the Institute for Computational and Mathematical Engineering, also known as ICME. And I have to say, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be hosting this day. Um, this is a dream uh, for us to organize a conference like this. Uh, and we're not alone in this. We've had fantastic help of our partners. Uh, and I want to just tell you at Walmart Labs is one of our industrial partners who's really been very instrumental in this. And we have partners at Stanford as well. Um, the Department of Statistics has helped us, the Mobilize Center in Bioengineering. Uh, we've had the Computer Forum jumping in. Uh, we've had great financial support of the president, John Hennessy, who unfortunately couldn't make it here today, but he's supporting us financially, so thank you to him as well. Now, one of the things that we're all really good at and that we're sharing, apart from the fact that most of us are of a particular gender, is that we are pretty good in statistics and probability. So if You've been to conferences, and you've, you've been in this field for a while, you know what percentage in this field are represented by women. So it's not very hard for you to probably compute the probability that at a conference that is a technological conference like today, where we're talking about the state of the art and science and technology and research, that all speakers are women. That is a pretty low probability. So we thought when we started thinking about this conference, let's make this probability 100%, hence today. Now, by the way, there's also a very low probability if you do your mathematics that conferences are all male, you know? <laughs> but as we all know, that happens quite often. Um, so we're turning the probability theory around a little bit. So why women? Well, there's lots of reasons. Um, if I wanted to just look at economic reasons, you know, and reasons for some of the companies that are here today, it's, it's very logical. Just look at the number of open positions that are out there in data science. People are screaming for good, for good data scientists. Um, it's such an incredible field right now to be in, and there's just simply not enough people out there. So not tapping into 50% of our population, of our talent, of course, would be a very silly thing to do. So that is, there's an economic necessity. There's, of course, simply a tremendous talent amongst the women. You know, I'm incredibly proud to be here today. We have fantastic speakers. Of course, we have fantastic female speakers, right? There's a lot of us contributing to this field. So it's just a really, exciting area for all of us to be part of and not having a lot of women also taking part of it would be a terrible shame. But above all for me, the re a really important reason to do this and highlight the impact that women have in this field and that, will, that can have in this field is simply because data science is a very rapidly growing field it is inc of increasing importance. So much research, um, as well as technology development, as well as business decisions, are made now based on data. So data-driven research is just expanding. Now, we all know that if we want to ask all of the right questions and look at all of the aspects around the problem, we need diverse teams. And so with this, in mind that data science is helping drive science and technology, is helping drive society, is helping drive our future. It is incredibly important to have inclusiveness. And so this is why I'm so happy to see all of you here today. Now you and the tables here today are gonna to be setting the stage 
for data science and already are. And so that, and, and you will be inspiring a lot of other women to go in this field as well. So you are the shapers of the future here of data science. And that's really why we organized WIDS, to bring be, uh, w women together, to inspire, to develop networks, to listen to fantastic talks on very good technology and science. So there was a lot of enthusiasm for this conference, and I know that when people start uh, to come in, uh, when they come in with all the traffic jams around, then we'll have a full house here. And that's really great. Um, so because of that excitement, we decided, oh, which two? The second conference, we're already starting to plan for that. And I just wanted to let you know that is going to be in February 2017. November 2016 didn't seem to be a great time because there was this little election going on. Um, so we thought we'd push it to February 2017. So uh, save the date for that. Now at this conference, we will have about 90 different companies represented, about 30 universities or national labs. We're live streaming and there are many places where this is done, Berkeley for example, University of Virginia, so I wanted to give a big shout out to those of you who are joining us, I should look in the camera, those of you who are joining us uh, out there on the live stream, welcome. Okay, now um, grab your program because I have to tell you a little bit about this conference. So there's programs on your table. Uh, really important at the first page of this program is our Twitter handle. And I could ask you to all grab your smartphones and start tweeting if, you, if you'd like. Or take a picture of your table and tweet the picture. You will find on the second page all of our sponsors again. There's also a table outside that um, will have some information from these sponsors. Uh, program at a glance. Uh, I will be emceeing today and we're going to be running a tight ship. Um, so what that may mean is that there may not be enough time after a talk uh, to ask questions. And rather than running late, uh, we'll just keep the questions for the breaks, okay? So if you're really interested in talking to one of the speakers, we're very informal here, please seek them out at the coffee breaks or at the lunch breaks, we will have plenty of breaks for that, or at the reception at the end of the conference and ask your question then. And as you will see in a minute, we'll also have loads of opportunity for you to follow up with speakers as well at the end of the, of the conference. Um, so the lunch, what is really important for me to uh, point out to you is that we have lunchtime breakouts. So you could see this is as our unconference time, if you'd like. There's small group discussions that will be held. Uh, some of them have already been pre-arranged and they're listed on the board just um, in front of this big hall. You can go there and sign up for any of these uh, lunch break uh, discussion tables. If you yourself have a burning topic that you would like to discuss at lunch, you can volunteer to lead a discussion as well. So in the coffee break, please get yourself over to the board, sign up for a lunch table topic or volunteer to organize one yourself. Uh, just before the lunch, I will tell you where to go for particular topics, okay? So we'll orchestrate that. But um, this morning, we'll try to get all the topics uh, lined up. Um, in the program, you will have the bios of all of the speakers. They are in, categorized by type of speakers. So we have some invited speakers, we have some fantastic tech, tech speakers, and we have panelists. And so they're organized by group and then alphabetical. Uh, because you have the bios of everybody, when I'm announcing somebody, I won't spend too much time telling you about what they've done. You can read that yourself as well. So we have more time to listen to them. Um, one of the main really important purposes of this conference is to create opportunities for you to find each other, to make connections, to find mentors, um, and to have ongoing discussions about technology, about careers, uh, about anything that is important to you. 
The unconference is one way of doing that. The other way for us to help orchestrate that is to have a continue the discussion website through a partner uh, company called Talking Cranes. So if you go to one of the last pages in your program, you will see information about this. So the Talking Cranes, uh, they set up a platform for uh, continuing engagement. Um, Talking Cranes itself is a startup. We have several people from Talking Cranes here today. Can you just stand up, raise your hands? Where are you? Hi. There they are. <laughs> so if you'd like to talk to them about this for your own company or for other uh, groups or institutions, please do seek them out. Um, and you can certainly also find them through this website. So what can you do at this website? You can look at the conference videos. All of the conference will be taped. All the videos will be online. We've also have, have interviewed uh, most of the speakers and more interviews will be held today. They will be posted online as well. If you couldn't ask a question to a speaker, you can post that, that question on Talking Cranes. The speakers will engage and they will check uh, the Talking Cranes website and answer any questions you will pose. Uh, so you can continue important discussions with the speakers or with any of the peers that you found today. Um, the main goal, of course, in the end is to really form a peer community of professional women from all over the world. We'll invite lots of other people to join us on this website as well. You can ask for advice from the community. You can provide advice to the community. You can form discussion groups and inspire each other. And of course, we will post all the information about related conferences and also Women in Data Science 2 uh, 2017. So the sign up is really easy. There's a QR code and information um, instructions right there. So grab your laptop or your phone and try it out. With that, enough for me. Um, as opening. I just hope that you will have a fantastic day today. We're very, very excited about our speakers. We're excited about network opportunities. We're excited about the rain. We're excited about the food. We're excited about the reception at the end of the day. And I'm definitely excited about introducing the first speaker as well. Uh, come on, Persis, come on up. So our first speaker uh, and a fellow opening speaker, let's put it that way, is Persis Drell. And Persis is the Dean of the School of Engineering here on campus. Um, and I was lucky enough to be in the search committee that, uh, that found Persis, or Persis found us. <laughs> it's been fantastic to have her as a female leader of the School of Engineering. She's already made a tremendous difference. And so I thought, you know, what better person to start off this day than Chris Estrell. Thank so. you. So I'm really just here to welcome you. Um, so welcome to Sanford and welcome to the Women in Data Science uh, Conference. I have to say I am thrilled to be in a room full of women at a technical conference. It, you know, it feels different. It is different. And it's great. For once, there's just no question I'm in the right room. Okay? I didn't go into the wrong room by accident. So it's rare. It's too rare. It's something to celebrate. I'm thrilled you're planning the next conference already. And the goals of the conference are, as you know, to inspire and educate data scientists regardless of gender, but also to support women in the field. And I just thought I'd give you my own personal three reasons why this is really, really important. So the first one, and this is echoing something Margot said, but in a slightly different way, we want everyone to be able to pursue the intellectual path that they're excited about, right? Each of you is a role model for young women and young men, but especially young women, who have an interest in the field of data science. And as they see you, and they see you being successful and happy and excited about what you're doing, they can start to see themselves. 
As you support each other to be successful, you chart a path for the young women of the future. And through events like this, you develop networks that will become a source of support both for each other and for the next generation. Now, there's a reason we need young women and young men to be contributing to this field. Solutions to the challenges of our future increasingly link back to data and data science. If there is a field that will define the next decades, it is yours. We can't afford to live in a society that in subtle and maybe some not so subtle ways actually discourages half the population from careers in this exciting field. But finally, and, and always important to emphasize, when there are hard problems to be solved, everyone in this room brings an important and a unique and a different and a diverse point of view to the table. There is a lot of talk right now about the importance of diversity, especially in Silicon Valley. But what often gets left out is why it is important. And I tell you, I feel this one particularly because our students are a bit confused sometimes. It's moving back into a, a check the box kind of mentality, and that is really Bad. Diversity is not about checking a box. Our students, our di very diverse students here at Stanford, are not here because we were checking boxes. Diverse teams, diverse groups, diverse approaches to problem solving are better. Period. When there is a difficult challenge to address, and our world is full of difficult challenges, we need a diversity of thought, a diversity of approaches, a diversity of styles to get to the solutions. And that's why we need diverse teams. Now, let's acknowledge, sometimes diverse teams can be more difficult to manage. It's really great to manage a team where everyone agrees with you, but you will not get to the right answer. When you have a team where people don't agree, respectfully don't agree, and bring different approaches, you have a much better chance of success. And working in teams where people come from the same background and have the same approach, in my view, is a path to failure. And unfortunately, I have a little experience watching it go to failure. So I, this one means a lot to me. So, so incur, I encourage you to celebrate, to enjoy this conference, Understand your role and accept your role in inspiring the next generation to follow their passion and make contributions to this important field, especially young women. And for each of you, cherish your roles as the disruptors, as the outsiders, as the leaders, as the team members, and help keep the reason that we continue to need to push for diversity front and center. So have a great conference.